for today's lesson, we will be discussing about the laws of logarithms. So we will be discussing the three laws of logarithms and we will be simplifying logarithms as well as evaluate them. The first law of logarithm is what we call as the addition law of logarithm or logarithm of a product. The logarithm of a product is equal to the sum of the logarithms of its factors. So when we are dealing with or if you want to use the laws of logarithms, you just have to look at the argument. So for the first one, the argument here is factorable. So in this example, the argument is mn. Once the argument is factorable, you can factor it out and separate the factors into different logarithmic expressions and connect them with addition. So if you're getting the logarithm of the product of two numbers, it's just the same as the sum of the logarithms of the factors itself. So example number one. Let's expand the logarithmic expression, logarithm of 5x. So in this case, we just have to look at the argument, which is 5x. Now, identify the factors of 5x. So the factors of 5x are just 5 and x. So you multiply 5 and x, then you will get 5x. Now, since the given or the argument is factorable, we can separate the factors into two logarithmic forms. So what we will be having here now is logarithm of, then we have 5, plus logarithm of x. So this is now the expanded form of the given logarithm. So again, after you factor out the argument, all you have to do now is to write them separately and then connect each expression using addition. Another example is uh, logarithm of 256 base 4. Now, again, look at our argument. So that is 256. So let's identify factors of 256. There are different factors. It can be 16 times 16. It can also be 32 times 8. 64 times uh, 4. 128 times 2. So there are a lot of factors for 256. Now you just have to choose any of them and then that's the one that we will use. So it, your answer can be logarithm of 16 base 4 plus logarithm of 16 base 4. It can also be logarithm of 32 base 4 plus logarithm of 8 base 4. Another one can be logarithm of 64 base 4 plus logarithm of 4 base 4. So again, all you have to do is just to identify the factors of our argument and then write them separately into logarithms. Our second law of logarithm is what we call as the subtraction law of logarithm or logarithm of a quotient. So, in this law, the logarithm of a quotient is equal to the logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. So, if in case you saw that the argument is in fraction form, or there's a numerator in the denominator, you can again simplify them or write them separately. So, you write the numerator as one logarithmic expression. You also write the denominator as another logarithmic expression. And then all you have to do is to connect them with subtraction. So as you notice, there are always a pair of operations for each law. So for the first one, it's addition and multiplication. For the second law, it is division and subtraction. So let's have this example. Expand the logarithmic expression logarithm of 8 over x base 5. So again, just look at the argument. So as you will see, the argument now is in fraction form. So it's 8 over x. So that means what we can do is to expand this, just write separately the numerator and the denominator into two different logarithmic expressions. So what we will have here now will be logarithm of 8. So you get the numerator, base 5, minus logarithm of x base 5. So that will now be the expanded form of this given logarithms. Again, just get the numerator, get the denominator, write them separately into two logarithmic expressions, and then connect with subtraction. Another example, expand the logarithmic expression logarithm of a, b over 3 base 5. 
So again, we have here the argument, which is AB over 3. So this one is in fraction form. So we can use the second law or the law of quotient and then write separately the numerator and the denominator. So we will, be, uh, so we will have here logarithm of AB base 5 minus logarithm of 3 base 5. Now, you will notice that this one can still be simplified. So, this logarithm of a, b, base 5, we can still simplify this using the first law because the argument, which is a, b, can still be factored out and the factors are a and b. So, that means we can still separate them. So, that means we will write this as logarithm of a, base 5, plus logarithm of b, base 5, so again, I used the first law of logarithm to separate the factors of a, b, then minus logarithm of 3 base 5. So this is now our final answer. So there are cases wherein you have to use more than one uh, laws of logarithm in order to simplify the different expressions or to expand the different expressions. And the last law of logarithm is what we called as the exponent law of logarithm or logarithm of a power. So the logarithm of a power, m raised to n, is equal to the product of the exponent n and the logarithm of m to the given base. So you will apply this law of logarithm if you noticed or if you see that our argument has an exponent as well. So what will you do is, you just have to get the exponent and then put it in front of our logarithm. And then, we will now have n times the logarithm of m base b. So we are now multiplying the exponent, which is n, to the logarithm of m to the given base, which is b. So let's say this is the example. Uh, expand the logarithmic expression ln of 9 raised to 3. So looking at the argument, you will see that there is an exponent or our m has a value of n. So what you will do is you just have to get the exponent and then put it in front of our logarithm and then that's it. We already expanded our logarithm. So in this case, 3 is the exponent. So I will put it in front of our logarithm. So we will have 3 ln of 9. And then that's it. We already expanded our logarithmic expression. Another example, let's say we have here logarithm of AB raised to one third base 8. So again, looking at our argument, it is raised to a certain power, which is in this case is one third. So all we have to do is to put it in front of our logarithm. So we will have one third times logarithm of a, B, base 8. Now, what we applied here is the third law or law of the power. Now, you will notice that the argument is still factorable. So, you can still uh, expand A, B wherein we will be separating A and B and write them into two different logarithmic expressions. So, with that, we will be applying the first law, or the law of the product. So this will become one-third logarithm of a base 8 plus one-third logarithm of b base 8. So in here, we use the first law. So after we apply the law of the power, we still separated the factors of the argument a b into a and b and then we're able to get our answer so this is now the expanded form of our logarithmic expression now what we will do next is we will be trying to simplify logarithmic expression so this time we will be given uh, different sets of logarithmic expressions and we have to write them into a single logarithmic term so for example simplify the logarithmic expression logarithm of 2x base 3 logarithm of 6x base 3 minus logarithm of 5 base 3 into a single term now when you are simplifying you have to make sure that the bases of our logarithms are the same so if you notice all of them are base 3 
if in case they are not the same, it's either you change the base or you cannot really combine the two or the combine the terms. So if you are given more than one expression, what you will do is you have to get first the first two terms and then simplify. Now notice that the operation between the two terms here is addition. So going back to our rules, we know that addition is paired with multiplication. And that is under the first law, which is law of the product. So that means if you are given expressions that are added together with the same basis, you can combine the arguments by multiplying them. So we will be having here logarithm of, then you multiply the argument, so that is 12x squared base 3. So in this case, I used the first law of logarithms, I combine the two. And then, I just put here minus logarithm of 5 base 3. You just have to keep on simplifying. So, this one, we already have these two expressions. Since now the operation is subtraction, what we will do is we will be applying the second law, which is law of a quotient. And then, to write them as one, we will just get the arguments and then write them in terms of fraction. So we have here logarithm of then 12x squared all over 5 base 3. Now you check if the arguments are still uh, factorable or if you can still cancel out common terms. But if not, then this is already your final answer. So the given in single term is logarithm of 12x squared over 5 base 3. Another example, let's simplify this given logarithmic expression into a single term. So again, you just have to look at the terms and then it's very important that you know which among the operations are partnered with one another. So in this case, the operation between our two terms is subtraction, meaning we can combine this two into one single term using our second law. So what we will do is, let's just write here logarithm and then let's write AB over B cubed base 3. Again, we used here the second law of logarithm which is the law of quotient. Now, you again have to check the argument if you can still simplify. Notice that both of them, they have B, so that means we can cancel out B. So, therefore, we will just have A over B squared base 3. So, it's now logarithm of A over B squared base 3. So, this is now your final answer. Another example is, let's say we have to times the logarithm of b base a plus 3 times the logarithm of 4b base a. Then we have to write it again in a single term. So what I will do is, if you're given like this, you have to simplify first each of the logarithmic expressions that we have. So let's simplify this one first. As you can see, there is a number or a coefficient in front of our logarithm. So that means we just have to bring this back into our argument and use it as the exponent. Because as what we know with a third law of logarithm is that if the argument has an exponent, you just have to place it in front of the logarithm. So we're just uh, revising or reversing the process. So this will become logarithm of b squared base a. You'll do the same thing with the other one. So plus then logarithm of 4b raised to 3 base a. So I used here the third law. After that, we can now combine the two. So we will be using the first law of logarithm because this one is addition. So we're going to multiply the argument. So logarithm of, then we have b squared times 4b cubed. So that will be our argument, base a. But before we can multiply them, by the way, I used here the first law. Before we can multiply, you have to simplify first 4b cubed. So that will be logarithm of b squared times distribute. So we have 64b cubed. 
So that will be our argument. And then multiply the two. Logarithm of 64 b raised to 5 and then base a. So that will be now the simplified term. So that will be now the simplified uh, form of our logarithmic expression. Now what we will do is let's just try to evaluate some logarithmic expressions. And this time we will be applying the laws of logarithms. So first example, uh, evaluate logarithm of 162 base 3 minus logarithm of 2 base 3. So when you are evaluating and you notice that the terms have the same base, so why not let's try to simplify them or write them as one expression only or one term. So you will see here that the operation between the subtraction, they have the same base. That means we can combine the argument by dividing them. So we are applying now the second law. So this will become logarithm of 162 over 2 base 3. So again, I applied here the second law. Then after that, you can simplify the argument. So 162 divided by 2 is 4. 162 divided by 2 is 81. So we now have logarithm of 81 base 3. And then from here, you can now simplify or evaluate this. So in order for us to get 81, if the base is 3, then the exponent should be equal to 4. So that will now be the value of our uh, logarithmic expression. And for our last example, uh, let's evaluate logarithm of 4th root of 27 base 3. Now, if you will look at the given, you will not see any addition symbol. There's no subtraction symbol. Also, the argument doesn't have an exponent. So, what we can do here is we have to manipulate first the argument so that we can apply some of the laws of logarithms. So, let's try to look at argument which is 4th root of 27. Now this 4th root of 27 actually we can rewrite this into its rational form wherein the exponent is a fraction. So all you have to do is just get the radicand or the number inside the radical sign and then raise it to a fraction. Now what fraction should we use? Since this one is a 4th root that means the denominator of our fraction should be equal to 4 and the numerator is always 1. So this is 27 raised to 1 fourth. So if you're given square root of 27, you can write this as 27 raised to 1 half. If you have fifth root of 27, you can write this as 27 raised to 1 fifth. So the denominator of our exponent is just the index of our radical sign. So just take note of that. Now, since we know that 4th root of 27 can be written as like this, we can rewrite the given logarithmic expression into logarithm of 27 raised to 1 fourth base 3. Now, since as you can see, the argument already has an exponent, that means we can apply the third law. So, you just have to get the exponent and then put it in front of our logarithm. So, you have 1 fourth logarithm of 27 base 3. And then from here, you can already evaluate. So, all you have to do is get first the value of logarithm 27 base 3 and then multiply it to 1 fourth. So, this one... Uh, in order for us to get 27, if the base is 3, we have to raise it to 3. So 3 cubed is 27. And then multiply it with 1 fourth. So therefore, we will get 3 fourths as our final answer. So that is how you evaluate logarithmic expressions. Uh, and if you want to use the laws of logarithms uh, in evaluating. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the laws of logarithms, how to simplify and evaluate using them, and see you next time.